Hi, my name is Kelly Flint. I am the June 2021 Artist in Residence here at Zion National Park, and I make abstract paintings and drawings. All right, so these are some of the paintings that I've been working on um, while in residence here at the Grotto House in the park. Um, I'll talk a little bit about a couple of them. So uh, this piece is um, sourced from a photograph that I took of the ground um, on one of these social trails by the river. And it's depicting, um, still in progress, so more will be added, uh, but depicting the, the rocks and the dirt and then also these metal um, uh, grids that are placed in the soil to mitigate erosion. So while in the park, I've been thinking a lot about water, um, thinking how the canyon was formed by water, thinking about how water moves through the canyon, how it's being used. So um, this was a way for me to sort of in interpret some of that and how water moves um, in this in this landscape. And then this piece here is um, a composite of a few different ideas. So still thinking about water on some of these rock faces in, in the canyon, you can see water seeping through the sandstone. And so the, the background of this piece um, is, is, is some of that imagery, some of that staining of the rock faces, which to me is really beautiful and can definitely be translated um, using thin washes of paint on the canvas, thinking about the canvas like it's sandstone, um, so allowing it to seep through. And then the foreground is actually, the structure of the foreground are the saddles um, that, or actually one particular saddle mirrored on each side of the uh, piece, on the top and the bottom, of um, over by Big Bend, which is a shuttle stop um, on the, the scenic drive. So I've biked past that many times, looked at it so many times, and really felt compelled to put it in a painting. So this is sort of a composite of a few. Um, and then this piece over here um, is based off of a hike I went on in the Narrows. Um, so also thinking about that kind of staining, that water seeping through the rock faces, but also the light that was occurring at that time. There was this bright yellowish-orange light coming from uh, the sun onto a rock face in the distance because this one was completely black, blackened with desert varnish, and then the one in the in the background was hit by the light, and my camera kind of blew it out a little bit, but um, I, I really liked the, that contrast, so I, I stuck with it. And then um, this green, this kind of toxic green, um, is specific to this time period in the canyon where uh, there exists some of that cyanobacteria in the water, so uh, I wanted to um, keep it really specific, you know, what's specific to this time and place. So um, that's something that's happening right now in the ecosystems out here. So it's important for me to include it in the work. Um, but yeah. I think abstraction is really important when it comes to interpreting and translating, I guess, um, the places that we explore and we see here in national parks. Abstraction leaves room and space um, to, to find moments that might be alternative or different or composed in such a way where you have the freedom to, to zoom in really, really intensely on something and break it open and break it apart or zoom out and compile or compose um, a work of art based off of different experiences in the landscape. So I think abstraction provides freedom for the artist to interpret and expand on what they're experiencing. And then also, I think, opens up an understanding for the viewer to think about what they've seen or what they might think they understand in a different way. So typically how I make work is I start by experiencing a place. So going to um, a landscape either by way of, um, you know, camping or, you know, living in a place for a certain amount of time um, 
and really trying to explore and understand that place as best I can. And I say the word understand really loosely because I don't ever feel like I completely know a place or a landscape um, when I'm exploring or when I'm in it. I feel like I'm, it would take like more than a lifetime to actually uh, know a place or even if that's possible. Um, so I start by, by going to these places, exploring them, getting to know them as much as I can, uh, taking photographs of certain aspects of that place, of that landscape, and then, and also writing. So writing how I've um, interpreted uh, the space or the place or the colors or the textures or the forms, and then also doing some other kind of research about the region of the place alongside um, that physical in situ experience. Um, and then those things combined, I bring that back into the studio, sort of rethink, you know, what I, I thought I understood about this region or this landscape and translate that onto the surface of uh, canvas or wood or paper. Um, yeah, and so I'm, I'm sort of looking for things that interest me, things that strike me as strange or odd. Um, I look for the unexpected and try to place that in some way into my work. So it might be something that's um, two different areas of a region or a landscape combined into one on the surface of, of, the, um, of the painting or the drawing, or it might be one area like zoomed in or another area zoomed out. And I don't necessarily always translate the same things that I see. So I might shift colors or push colors beyond what um, is actually there in an effort to, um, to shift focus towards something else or to bring my understanding or my viewpoint of this place or space into the work. Um, sort of my lens or filter through which I'm, I'm seeing. I think artists in residence are very important because I think that we as a society need as many interpretations of landscape, of wildlands, of spaces that need to be preserved and conserved as possible. We need writers, we need musicians, we need visual artists, we need dancers, we need um, every realm of the creative arts, I think, should be coming into these places in their efforts to understand, interpret, and um, create as a result of their experiences. And not just to, to do that in, in silo, but to bring these works, um, these creative practices, back to their communities, to share them. Uh, with the people that they know and the people that they don't know. It's my, it's my hope to bring my work back to my community in California um, and exhibit these pieces to, to hopefully get people to care. Um, I think this, this attention that's being paid in that creative act is really specific and important. And with all of these different varieties of these interpretations, it allows for the viewer to have multiple modes of of um, experiencing a place. And you never know, like someone might respond mostly to realism, someone might respond mostly to abstraction, someone might respond mostly to something visual or auditory or physical or performance-based. So we need as many of these kinds of interpretations creatively as possible to reach others. What have I learned while living in Zion? I've learned so much so far, um, and so much more. I, I feel like when I leave, um, as things start to sink in, I'll start to um, realize more and more of what I've learned. But what I can say now is I've learned a lot about how the Park Service works. Um, I've learned a lot about how park museums work. I've learned a lot about how preservation and conservation works, um, specifically this year under the framework of resist, accept, and direct. So um, that is something that's a framework of understanding that deals with um, how the park service will handle 
certain um, changes within ecosystems. I've learned a lot about that. Um, I've learned a lot about what the park is like at every time of the day, on different days, with different weather. So there's a physicality of what I've learned here um, about this, this place, this landscape. Um, and I've learned a lot about myself. Um, I've learned a lot about how I handle being in a place like this alone. Um, yeah, that's been, that's been something that's been both really, um, really enlightening and challenging at times and really fun at times, really peaceful, um, stressful. I, I'm not really sure what kind of expectations about, um, how I was going to experience this place, uh, you know, were, but, you know, so much has come up to the surface, so much that... I didn't realize was was going to happen. I sort of thought, I think, like, I guess my expectations were that I was going to, you know, come in, you know, hike around, make some art, go to bed, eat some dinner, you know, and all that definitely happened. But there were all these other moments kind of within that that I didn't realize um, were going to come up. Um, moments of, of anxiousness and sometimes sadness and then also great joy and peace um, moving around the landscape. So... Um, yeah, I've learned uh, a lot about me, <laughs> um, but I think more importantly, I, I'm trying to shift my focus um, to this area, this region, this place, and the people that work within the park. I've learned a lot about them too, which has been really cool and really fun. <laughs> um, so yeah.